Welcome to the second series of the WMA Corona Talks. Today, the chair of the World Medical Association Council, Dr. Frank Ulrich Montgomery, will join me from Berlin. Dr. Montgomery is a radiologist who served as president of the German Medical Association from 2011 to 2019. He is currently also the president of the Standing Committee of European Doctors, the association that represents physicians to the European Union institutions. Welcome, Dr. Montgomery. Welcome, Otmar. The Johns Hopkins University reports currently more than half a million infections per day of the coronavirus and more than 11,000 deaths per day. Quite frankly, that doesn't seem to be that we have the pandemic under control. Um, rather, it looks that without a pharmacological cure that we can offer, that the vaccines which have been authorized recently are the only chance to get back our normal lives. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. This um, pandemic is ravaging through the world at present times. We have, to con con we have to consider today that there is no valid treatment against uh, the virus. Uh, there is no, uh, su not sufficient vaccination around the world up to now, so there is only prevention that will help us. And uh, also a lot of information and discussion with the public, uh, because there are still a lot of people around who believe that this disease is not worse than influenza or other minor infectious diseases. So currently we are only left with the traditional ways of fighting a pandemic that is distance, hygiene, face mask, ventilation for corona or against corona to be more precise. But we also see the economic consequences of this pandemic. Um, with the contact restrictions we currently have in place, at least in many countries, even the strongest economies are suffering in a way that is not sustainable over a long time. Yes, we have to ascertain there is a very complex, complex trapeze of four different issues which have to be discussed. There is health, of course, which is the prime issue of the World Medical Association and of us as physicians. But there are also social pathological questions, like, for instance, uh, do you deprive children of education by closing schools uh, and kindergartens? But there is also the economic measures. A lot of people are driven into bankruptcy through closing, through lockdowns. And there is finally also the restriction on basic human rights, like free mobility, etc. And I don't envy politicians for the difficult, uh, difficulty of deciding the exact point within these four corner zones, uh, which they have to consider when they come to conclusions. But uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and this light is not the oncoming train, but it is the vaccine, which uh, will help us uh, overcome this, uh, this disease uh, in, uh, in some time. The vaccines that are currently offered raised a lot of concerns, and I'm not talking about the anti-vaxxers who are against each and every vaccination. There are many folks out, even a lot of physicians and other health professionals, who raise very clear questions. Uh, number one, why are we suddenly getting a vaccine when in the past it took at least four years to develop a new vaccine for the market? So have those vaccines really been scrutinized for safety and efficiency properly? And the other question that I hear quite often is, are the new therapeutic approaches which we have in those vaccines, the genetic approaches which are being used now, um, mRNA, for instance, or vector vaccines, are they really safe in the long run? Um, is there any danger of a genetic damage that we probably do to ourselves? Um, so let me ask you, did the speed of the testing raise any concerns to you? I think it is totally valid uh, that you have to consider the risk profile of every vaccine, and definitely, of course, of a new vaccine. Uh, there is uh, always the question, why did it go so quickly? Why did we only need one year to get vaccines instead of, I think the shortest in the past uh, was months, uh, where there was four years uh, between uh, the development of the virus and the development of the vaccine. Uh, in this case, there is one big impediment which has been resolved through government money, and that is the building up of production lines. Normally, big companies only start up building production lines when they are sure that they are safe uh, that their vac vaccines work. In this pandemic, governments subsidized production lines to an enormous extent, and a lot of the vaccine was already produced even before 
the uh, the administration has granted approval of um, the um, the vaccine. The second question goes to the risks uh, uh, of the vaccines. Um, they, I, I was always strongly for uh, for correct uh, registration procedures and not for emergency registrations of these uh, vaccines because I think we have to give people the 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 certainty that uh, the risk profile of uh, the vaccine is definitely much lower than that uh, of the disease itself. But we have to ascertain on long-term effects uh, on neither of these vaccines, anyone can say anything, because there are no long-term experiences with these vaccines up to now. But looking at the scientific principles which are behind them, I think uh, that we do not risk uh, long-term uh, effects. And your final question, the genetic approach, if you know, if you look into the difference between DNA and messenger RNA, you know that there is no backlash into the genetic code. It is just, uh, it's, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a plaster mold of uh, the DNA, but it is not going to go back into the DNA. So I think there is no genetic risk on the mRNA uh, principles. All the others, the vector vaccines, etc., have been tested in other diseases before. So I think as far as anyone can say with the knowledge of today, it is safe to use these vaccines. But I can understand anyone who wants to have more and uh, more detailed uh, information. The authorities have used different terms for the expedited authorization. In some countries, this was an emergency authorization. In the European Union, they use a so-called rolling review. Is there a difference? Yes, definitely. In the uh, in the emergency registration uh, and approval, which was done in some countries of Europe and other countries as well, uh, all the litigation risk goes over to the government, and um, uh, the um, uh, the study results uh, of um, the the factory or the firm that asks for authorization uh, are not checked or tested; they are simply taken for granted. In the rolling review, uh, there is at least a scientific uh, review of um, the studies, phase one, two, and three. Uh, and there is also a constant uh, communication between um, the, um, the factory or the firm, the producer, and uh, the authorizing authority. So I think this is much safer. And I think, it, therefore, it was worth uh, waiting these two weeks in the European Union um, for this uh, type of registration because it gives more safe, it gave more safety and more security to physicians and nurses. So when you speak to your colleagues, what is your resume concerning the vaccination? What should they do? Well, first of all, uh, of course, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. But also, get vaccinated. Get your staff uh, to be vaccinated. Get all the people around you to be vaccinated, because the vaccine is... Uh, is the solution to the end uh, uh, of this uh, pandemic. And uh, do keep, uh, uh, keep on track with the scientific results. Uh, I think uh, we have to convince many more people if we show that there are less side effects to these uh, vaccination, vaccines uh, than expected, then we'll get even more people vaccinated. There will be some anti-vaxxers which we will never convince. But forget about them, vaccinate the rest, uh, and then... Uh, on the safe side of this pandemic in a year or two. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery. Thank you, Arthur.